favorite things, things to talk about. So let's get right, let's get right into this. <clears throat> George Soros is, okay, he is a really great example of why, you know, again, we don't even include Trump in this shit. Somebody like, Soros is a billionaire, but, you know, people know his name, but not like in the Michael Bloomberg way. Soros really does contribute to things. He uses what he has. It's a thing of like, okay, he helps people fly themselves like okay are, are you it's like okay, are you gonna give somebody a ride or are you gonna help them set up to or, or will you help them get set up to drive their own car put it that put it that way and he so <clears throat> His projects are for other people that to know what they're doing to do to do things. So the Open Society Foundation is something that can like some of the things he does. He supports a lot of public media and things for people to get their own word out. But okay, so now the Open Society set up a four-year. 15 million in 15 million dollar initiative to help Africa get back looted cultural objects. I mean, so that's just fucking amazing. And but so anyway, but last year, see, I started. I especially was following this since last since last year, and. Emmanuel Macron was like visiting someplace in Africa and talking about it and not do and not doing any anything. I don't know, man, he's a dope. Um, but okay, so there's been a little bit of progress. France has returned a 19th century sword to Senegal, and the sword began. It belonged to somebody who's oh. Okay, Senegalese. Um, okay, a anti-colonial figure fighter called Omar Sadu, and the French Prime Minister handed over the sword to the Senegalese Prime Minister in Dakar, and the sword is now in the Museum of Black Civilizations of Dakar. So that's a museum, you know, which hopefully, I mean, they're building this this is being built to house this shit, okay? Like, get it back. So, <clears throat> okay, the move comes after the Senegalese government requested for France, they, okay, they requested France to return more than 100 artif artifacts. And, okay, here's more. What President Macron had commissioned a report entitled the restitution of it toward the restitution of African cultural heritage. But not much has happened as a result of his report because not many things happen as a result of reports. That's not how to do, well, you know, no, I'm not. You do have to do, do some re research and research and reporting. Um, but, okay, so I was, re and then I was reading an article where somebody from a museum dude was asked why the stuff isn't being sent back and he said the heritage of Mr. Beaster said the heritage of humanity should be accessible to everyone everywhere and that in the case of art ownership was not what mattered okay the, i mean that is that's like pe that's like when rich people say money doesn't matter Right. Stuff doesn't matter when you have it. Exactly. So, yeah. So we will keep following that. I mean, you know, return return stuff. It's just so fucked up. I mean, art artifacts and history. It's 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 important. People need to connect with their connect with their past. And this was stolen. I mean, it's weird when I think about. You know, just I mean, I was always I was always taken to museums. I was as a kid, and you know, looking at old and ancient stuff is just something I've always relatively been aware of. And so it's interesting now to think about it. Um, look at this stuff I've been, you know, 
interested in for, for a long time. But yeah, I mean, and as I've gotten more into global politics, I've learned more about learned more about that stuff. So, <clears throat> okay, so the sword was been had been sent back, and <laughs> okay, this is a bronze cockerel taken by British colonial forces and donated to Jesus College, Cambridge, is to be returned to Nigeria in an unprecedented step that adds momentum to the growing repatriations uh, movement. It's called the Okafor, and it's described by the college as the royal ancestra, ancestral heirloom, will be one of the first Benin bronzes. Benin was a um, sort of a, a dynasty in Nigeria. Um, to be returned to Nigeria by a major British institution since 1897 when thousands of bronzes were stolen from Benin City by British forces. And I read an article by someone who I just learned about. I happened to read about her because, oh man, Okay, this, this could almost be a whole nother, another thing. The British labor government and anti-Semitism. Okay, now, like, stay with me, guys. This does connect, this does connect, because um, the, um, bron okay, the bronze cockroach, we're going this, and then in the British Guardian, and there was an article by a black, Jewish British woman. Black so, Jewish British woman. Yeah. I don't know. That was like a, a big combination right there. Yeah. It sounded the way you said it. But. Yeah. 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 Well, and that was some of the stuff she was she was she was writing about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, because okay, there's Brexit now, and there's the um. Labor government and the Tory government in in Great Britain, and there's a strong belief that the Labor government is is anti-Semitic for various reasons. Some that I think are legitimate, and some that I that I don't. It does get back to our good old friend Israel. There's people that again like supporting there's people that think if you don't support the state of Israel as a Jewish state you're anti-semitic and no, I, I do not I do not believe that and that um, it's the problem with demand it, I mean it has to, so there's a there's like a list of qualifica of qualifications or things um, that you have to believe in in order to so this woman's article was about how, and it's similar to the Buttigieg thing we were talking about, about her, she feels like, okay, the labor government has a better record on racism, so she's in the of people who have multiple identities of, she feels, of not being, recognized for the no, she she doesn't feel that her reasons for being part of the labor party as a black person are recognized by Jewish English people who are just upset about the anti-semitism okay so I'm following her I'm following her on Twitter on Twitter now <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and I forget her name, I'll find it after, 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 the, after, after the next break. Um, she went to Cambridge, she attended Cambridge. She's also like an academic and the first like black woman professor in a whole lot of, you know, um, in this, at this university. And so she, this, <laughs> Okay, remember I said I was going to get back to the bronze cockerel? The bronze cockerel was displayed at Cambridge University, where this, where this lady went, where this writer, where this writer went. She got interested in it 
and a group of students started writing letters about it because okay this is one of the reasons why people should give the fucking antiqu antiquities back okay they looted like hundreds of them this was just like in a display case at a university and when you think about it when you i mean picture this like yeah that's like something but it's not like that's a big deal it's not like it would be missed right i mean there's going to be a ton of stuff to of stuff to look at there so she started this or was one of the people that got this going so it was a very interest it was an interesting week i was making a lot of, there was a lot of connections going on there okay and another place where a whole lot of artifacts are held is the that is the vatican and okay this is a, a fragment of wood believed to have formed part of jesus's manger has been returned to bethlehem after more than a thousand years at the vatican pope francis ordered the return it, it's it's like it's like this is like literally like a thumb sized piece of wood. Pope Francis ordered the return of it from Rome's Basilica. Um, and yeah, it's been in Rome since the seventh century. So that's being sent back to Bethlehem and people are really excited excited by it. That's our I guess that's that's maybe our Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Here's a here's a, here's a piece of a manger. How the fuck do you know, man? Right. It's a piece of wood. <laughs> I mean, you know, like a piece like with the artifacts. There's stuff you can do so far as like style, you know, style. It's a, you know, I mean, there's a lot of ways to figure out if an artifact is real, but a piece of wood is a piece of wood. Yes. Even if it's a thousand really years, no authentic way. Even if it's a thousand years old. old. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really what, no way to yeah, yeah. Oh my God, this was the discussion we had um, about um, sending remains back to Ethiopia of the Ethiopian prince that was kidnapped in Westminster Abbey and they, they're claiming that there's too many bodies down there for them to find his. It's like, oh, fake it, okay? So, that is a problem, though, <laughs> in some places. Um, back to, well, that would certainly be an issue, you know, God, talk about, talk about overpopulation. You know, shit, you have, like, people not having enough to eat. First you have not enough not enough to eat and then you just have people dying, so Ugh bad. Come on. It's the United States. Um Okay, so that was what was going on in Great Britain and uh, people some of the I, I read I read the British papers and so and my dad follows Brexit. I mean I I tried I tried to follow Brexit, but that has to do with um, because we were talking, we were trying to figure out why people think are so concerned about the labor government being anti-Semitic. Okay, part of the, see, part of it is there are, there were labor leaders who, in the government, who stepped because they got anti-Semitic messages, and I think that's fucked up. Like that's not a re that's not a reason to, a reason to step down. If you're an elected leader, then you should be leading a fight against something, not just stepping Wimping down out. and whipping out and whipping out. Right. So that's about them. That's not or a spirit. I mean, to me, that's not that doesn't mean the party's anti anti-semitic that means that there's people who aren't who don't have the guts to stick around and try and deal with these and deal with you know and try and combat these issues like okay if you if you know it it's 
stand up if you're in a, if you have a position of power and you just go back down because somebody sent you mean letters then you're no good right exactly so okay but speak it's one thing um I don't think this had had did Kate had Katie Hill, the congresswoman, had to step down at our last show. Did we talk about this? No. We didn't. Okay. Well, this is extremely fucked up. And um, Con Katie Hill was a um, United States congresswoman. She's thirty-one. She was elected in twenty eighteen from a desert from. <laughs> a district that has been Republican. She's Southern California. She had a background in a homeless, an agency for the homeless, and had been very successful with that. So that's cool. It's not like she was somebody that just, you know, well, she sure as fuck didn't have any money. I mean, you know, she was somebody that somehow rather got in without doing anything constructive. So, photos were so she was reported for having an affair with a staffer which uh, with a male staffer and now okay now like as of a year or two um there's now rules forbidding that in the um Pamela in the <clears throat> Congress, you know, so whereas, like, basically, like, since the beginning of the U.S. government, women have been getting, like, you know, taken, adva taken advantage of by male politicians. Like, okay, yeah, now we're going to crack down on a young woman that had been in office for a year about an affair with, you know, um, with her campaign manager, so A, she's, say, she's saying um, he was her campaign manager, and that's not against rules, when they, and so she said they, they weren't having a relationship while she was in office, but okay, so anyway, there's that, which is enough bullshit on its own, and then new photos were, re were released of her, new photos, mm. and then one of her um, <laughs> pictures of her naked taking bong hits. So, yeah, well, whatever, you know, like, oh my God, she's naked and taking bong hits. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just, oh my God, what a, de what a degenerate. So, um, and she was bi and she was having a relationship with a young woman on her, um, you know, and polyamorous, whatever, which means like, having relationships with different with different people. It means polyamorous means you have you have relationships with multiple people and everybody knows what's going on what's going on. It's not sneaking around or it's not sneaking around or fucking around. Um, or cheat it's not cheating um, it's agreed upon by everybody. So and and so in other words it really should not be anyone's business. Right. Um, so pictures were released of her. <laughs> I saw these of her. Um, I read the I read the British papers, and the British papers rele released them. So there was a picture of her brushing the brushing the girl's hair. She was na it, it, it's kind of a weird picture because she's naked and the girl's dressed. So, but you know, I don't know. So her husband's re her husband released these photos. So that that is so fucked up and it's what's weird to me was you know I mean obviously she, she's not the first person to have had stuff like this happen but it's a whole nother level to have it be her husband because that's domestic abuse mm -hmm. that is there's violence there's violence that is physical and there's violence that is not physical and what he did was violent he tried to he tried to kill to kill her career there's like Guys that like walk into like their wives' workplaces and shoot them, and then there's guys that are married to people and release papers of them. I mean, photo photos of them, and so that's um, illegal. Hi, Juan. Um, and so she stepped down, and 
she said one of the reasons she did it was because the photos were going to keep being released. Because, okay, what we've had for eons is a male politician gets caught doing, gets caught do, doing something and then he like stands up and says he's sorry and his wife stands there like that and things usually, usually go on. But since her husband was some of a bitch that caused it, she couldn't do that. So she spoke about how, um, so put it, so there's different aspects here. Like if she had been at a, like I would have, I mean, again, I don't think that that's something for people to get any, people should need to step down about it. But like, say she, if, if she'd been at like a big raging, raging party and was, naked and take naked and taking bong hits and somebody got the picture on a cell phone and published it i would think that was bad judgment on her fault on her on her part like you know if it was in the past like you know that that's bad judgment but like it was her husband i mean you know people do people do stuff do stuff like that and you should you should that's not um I wouldn't consider that reckless or bad judgment or anything or anything like that. So that's just horrible. And um, so basically, if so, if I like or I think or hope because it had the support of a spouse, they would have she would have been she would have been able to do that and simply simply file a lawsuit and to stop any more. I mean was her husband gave the photos to a conservative media media site and so if it had been a different situation if it had just been some somebody else and her husband weren't a piece of shit and would have stood by her they could have gotten through you know she could have like just filed an injunction to get to not have any more so it was just sad it was frustrating um and you know they're saying it you know it could be a deterrent for women to get into into politics but it should be a deterrent to staying in abusive relationships and the um after that happened i watched a documentary about her campaign i love watching campaign um you know, it's a real, it's a really fun process. And I get to, what happens with, um, dom in domestic abuse, abuse cases is people are isolated and you can be isolated and surrounded by people. So she was running, Katie Hill was running her campaign and a whole lot of young staffers. And that's the case of all campaigns because, they work for little or for little or nothing. She didn't have peers. Her husband was barely around, and now we know now we know why. She didn't have family members around hardly at all. And when you see this sort of documentary, like a on the road docu documentary, you do see what people what people's lives are like like it showed her going to the hairdresser twice and i think the reason was that the hairdresser was like a, a, a friend i mean mm -hmm. like if like with a lot of people like you know well <laughs> I don't know. when you look at watch other campaign videos or like watch uh, other politicians you know they got their staff they got people that are um there's just a whole lot of people that won't that aren't in a position to set limits that aren't in a you know when you have you want to have friends that can be like hey what's up what's going what's going on with you and somebody you can really talk to you can't talk to your staffers so i really and it seemed like she had a drinking problem so i what i mean she's back on she was off twitter for a while she's back on i just hope that she gets help extricating herself from this marriage and with her so she has like mental health issues you know to, you know get that in gear like okay get yourself picked up and hopefully get you know get get back out there you know i mean it was fucking cool that 
she could get elected as you know such a young woman um so hopefully she'll be back out there moving on to like more bullshit for women in politics kamala Mm -mm. what do you what do you think about that um i haven't been following her as much you on the mic no, I'm not. I should be, huh? Yes, you should be. Yes, I haven't been following her as much. But I haven't heard much about her. Well, because like she stepped down. She said her campaign's over. She ended okay, her campaign. So there you go. That's why I didn't know. Well, it was just like two, like two, day, like two days ago. But oh, it's wow. fucked up. Yeah, okay, because I was talking about, like, okay, because, like, somebody like Mayor, like, Mayor Bloomberg, he should have, don't, you know, pick a fucking candidate and donate and donate to them. And right. yeah, and okay, part of the problem with the primaries is there's a whole lot of emphasis on Iowa and um, MP, Mayor Pete, shithead, is doing well there because he looks like a fucking Midwest corn fed boy. And, <laughs> you know, he's okay, like there's gays, but, and then there's people like. See, some of us, you know, there's the gays like, and I don't really consider myself much of an out there, out there person. I mean, I have a lot of friends and people I'm very close to that are more out there than I am that would consider themselves a gay friends, queer friends that consider you know i mean consider themselves to be more like rebellious or whatever like weird out of my out of out of the mainstream and and stuff so and i connect with that so there's a whole element that some of us feel with mayor pete of like no we're not people like him are like unthreat gays that are like almost straight gays where people can be like oh they're oh the gays that are just like us and when there's and we've talked about this before about so far as acceptance and learning to get to know people for a lot of people a gay per a gay man um who's all like Buttigieg and his husband who they're both like really like guys that look like everybody's like son and brother if they're <laughs> okay now let me add <laughs> let me add here they look they look like they could be people's son because you know a lot of them like okay well a lot of you anybody that thinks they don't have they don't know gay people just don't know out gay people because we're everywhere so you know so there's people so people like him are more palatable to people in Iowa than you know people I know than like gay people like tons of pe tons of piercings and that have a more that have more radical politics and that see our identity as that if you have an iota of if you know if there's been an iota of discrimination toward you you need to see that as part of a larger picture and ally yourself with people that have been treated worse and so that's why a lot of us just find it really I mean infuri infuriating that Buttigieg can't can't connect with black people I mean this is our world this is this is our this is our this is our country I mean you know this is we should have unity means everybody me should mean everybody so um, and then you have, of course, you know, then you have all my friends that are black and gay that are client that, and what people say, you know, my friends who are black and gay, I mean, how they view it is, 
discrimination, they're like, hey, you know, people don't need to know I'm gay, but but you can't, you know, I think people know you're black. So as far as discrimination, you can't, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a whole different thing. And so the, the, the conversations coming up on the board has been, there's studies about, um, yeah, the, there's a whole element that are like blaming black people not being into, I mean, not being into Buttigieg as homophobia. And so I just put down like, that's not, ask, um, you know, sort of ask people, of, they should be asked about, ask people about his, about his qualifications, you know? It's like, okay, if he was a really, really good can, good candidate, I'm like, okay, then we can talk about that. But it's not a good candidate, so don't go blaming it on, don't go targeting people in that way and blaming it on, on homophobia. And so he's made some comments, like really offensive, clueless comments, you know, something or other that, really disrespectful com um disrespectful fucked up comments and about black youth education and with so with your leaders it's not just like a it's not just that you that the language it's not it's so much worse than them just saying something wrong when you have they're showing that they just have a fundamental misunderstanding of the structures of society, of how things work. He said that he'd been mayor, he said that it, that he'd been, it, that it, he said, okay, it took him a while to realize how, um, how segregated the schools in South Bend, Indi Indi Indiana were. It's like, that's your fucking town, dude. How did you get a, you know, well, yeah, no wonder you, how do you, how can you not know that? And, you know, he said, he said something about a court, about a court order. And like, how can you be a person that supposedly or allegedly cares about communities and not your community and not understand the issues facing the schools in your community. Um, so, you know, so we're pissed. We're pissed that um, he is, you know, what a, a lot of us are, because a lot of us are just like, um, he does not, um, he does not, he doesn't, he doesn't represent, he does not represent, represent us. So, um, you know, so like basically, so it's a bunch of like shitheads giving money to him and not to, to Kamala Harris. And so there's that. And then there's Julian Castro, who's, you know, like fortunately like fucking Beto, who I couldn't stand. Um, me and my brother hated him because, um, we, we hated him because, L, well, I particularly, we particularly hated him because L, LBJ would have hated him, um, you know, because he was like a wuss. <laughs> 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 um, is, is, is a wuss. So, I mean, so there's Julie, so there's Julian Castro who has really important experience. And so, you know, it sucks, but. I mean, I'm reminding myself that we need to look at things longer term. Like, I did not think that Kamala Harris should have ran, should have ran for president in her first term in the Senate. I mean, I didn't. I didn't think Obama should uh, Obama should have run for president in his first term in the Senate. And in some ways, I still don't. Um, I think that we. I, I think he should have stayed in the Senate in the Senate for longer and gotten more and gotten more experience and you know I mean meanwhile fucking Buttigieg has no he like he ran for state treasurer of uh, Indiana and lost and he tried to be the head of the Democratic Party and lost so I'm like okay you have a guy that can't even win a state election or a 
you know, or you haven't served in the federal government. Like, okay, you haven't been elected to Congress. You haven't been elected to, you haven't been elected beyond the 8,000 people that voted for you. And I know I keep going back to that number, but like, okay, like Kamala was elected. Uh, there were like 7 million, there's 7 million people that elected Kamala Harris to the Senate. Like she has that much more support, you know, and she's like dealt with any like big girl problems, okay? She was the attorney general for the state of California. She deals with, I mean, she's talked about uh, this. Uh, it's an element, and the, I mean, the problem that people have with her is that the decisions and choices she's made as a member of law of law enforcement that's what that's that's what she was and or so and you know she was anti anti so there's always going to be people that don't like prosecutors that don't like how she applied laws and way back when when it was you know 20 years ago or whatever um when she was when Attorney General, she would manage, and again, like I and I say this with great respect. She would manage to not take positions on things legally, and people would want her to come out duking, duking for stuff, and she wouldn't. And you know, we always knew I was knew it was because she wanted to run for fucking, and she needed to stay. She couldn't get too far out there. And have a tenable chance to run for pre to run for president. Um, one of the things that's being said is that okay, um, she I think she would be a good VP for Joe. But I'm like okay, like now, um, even though like I'm still like now I'm hoping like more for Cory Booker. I don't know. I as I, I donated three bucks to Cory Booker and three bucks to Julian Castro. Um, one of the things that said is um you know of course like he's immediately asked like would um joe was immediately asked like you know would you consider kamala for vp 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 vice president i think if i think that that would be good i mean theoretically even though i'm like you know in a way, I mean, everything being this fucked up is just, again, the measure of the effects that we're going to be feeling for years of Donald Trump. Like, okay, he got into office and everybody just stepped, you know, moved everything, everything backwards. And you know we didn't get we didn't get a woman pre a woman pre a woman president. We got Trump, and you know now we will probably if he is defeated, which is an <laughs> if, it'll be another white guy. So I think Kamala being would be a good vice president for good for Biden. Well, for well, for a, for a couple reasons, it would replicate um, because it would mean. I mean, you know, he would only serve one term, so it would mean she could run for president for in four years, and she was friends. She really was friends with Bo Biden, his son. So I think that would be. I think she'd be good for him. I think she'd really help keep him on his keep him on his toes. And um, I mean, the question it's a it's a big. I mean, because a lot of people don't want to be vice president. So you think if Biden becomes president, he'll he'll ask her or have her? I think it's quite possible. I think he'll ask her. Yeah. I mean, he's also saying, um, um, talking about, you know, people bring up Stacey Abrams, but I'm again like, no, she needs to win. She needs to win an election. She needs and. You know, um, I know it was unfair. I know she was. I know she was fucked over, and we need to be vigilant about what happens next and make it so she wins next next time. So 
I mean, Kamala's because I mean, Harris, shit, she's South Carolina, South, South Carolina. Um, she's South Carolina or Georgia. Shit, I get that mixed up. Um, <laughs> sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, Kamala would be a good, um, I know like people are going to be seeing like, oh, they don't get along because of the thing that happened in the debate, but that's not true. They get along. Um, and, you know, I mean, he would have felt, I think he, she would be a big help to him, um, as somebody that was close to Bo and she's tough enough and accomplished enough so that it wouldn't look like, I don't know, well, it's weird, you know, op optics or how, so then the other thing people are saying is, Elizabeth Warren and Julian Castro, which I think would be good. I mean, actually, I mean, shit. I'd rather have Warren. And, I'd rather have Warren and Ca Warren and Castro than um than by. I don't know. <laughs> Why should I have to think that shit, man? I would. I. I would. I mean, I would like to have whatever Kamala and Kamala and Castro or whatever. So. Okay, man, there's so much going on. Um, okay, so there's... Um, okay, so we followed the election, the, the revolution in Sudan, and this is... Okay, good stuff does happen. There's new... Um, Okay, yeah, and this is this is Sudan. Um, the transitional government overturned a Sharia-based law which had rules that targeted women, and then Sharia is the harsh, strict version of Islam that oppresses women and basically everyone everyone else. So that's good. I mean, we're, it's the transitional government, which we've talked about before. It's a mixture of civilian and military, and they are supposed to be in power for three years, and hopefully, you know, three, three years to pray, because I do, for <laughs> the world, and do whatever the fuck we can for the people of Sudan to have the lives that they deserve. Um, and in South Sudan, there's... Okay, yeah, okay, so the United Nations is redeploying troops South Sudan. South Sudan is supposed to have a, is supposed to be having a true a truce right now, but um, people are fighting. Try there's it's been tribal tribal fighting, um, and okay for health workers in you know this sucks. I, I just uh, I mean. Um, I guess I partially just talk about them again to just send them my best wishes. Help people in Democratic Republic of Congo kill healthcare workers that are trying to fight Ebola. And this keeps happening and those pe those healthcare people keep going back. I mean, shit, I say that like every time. I would be, I mean, I would go someplace dangerous to go help to go help help people definitely you know I mean I would like go someplace where I would be like risk risked getting shot or something or something like that I would do that if I had skills that I could contribute but I would have a real hard time if the people if people were directly targeting me in that way for that reason you know what I mean it's not like I mean you know like you can go someplace and be some dangerous place and be doing healthcare and get killed because everybody's being killed. Mm -hmm. But God, just being targeted for the very thing you're trying to do to help is just so sad. Oh, okay. Um, 
restitution. I was so excited. I was talking about this in this on um, Duck Soup like night, last night. Okay, Congratu congratulations to Illinois. It's the first Midwest state to legalize cannabis. So, yay. Congratulations, Midwest. So, there were articles or, you know, there was new, new segments showing people lined up for blocks and blocks. But... Along with that, the city of Evanston has voted to use all revenue generated from recreational marijuana taxes to fund reparations programs that will benefit its African American residents. The population of black residents in the city decreased from 22.5% of the population into 69% in 2017. So I saw that, I was almost like reading that over again, like, wow, that makes so much, I mean, since when do you ever see governments getting to do something that cool? Like city governments getting to do stuff like that, stuff like that, that, that cool. So, you know, I definitely like exchange messages about that with Hakeem and we're all like, wow, I mean, I mean, it's remarkable that this, I guess, the, they ha have that much power or, I don't know. But anyway, that is, that is fucking, <laughs> um, okay, this, okay, this was really funny because I don't know if you saw when, when I was having this, is age watching when I was having, having this discussion with, um, age about this last about this last night somehow yeah he was talking about whether whether he would want to move to in you know first when I was saying the thing about um marijuana being legalized in Illinois he was talking to saying he still sort of want to wouldn't want to go there but well like I was like well wait, wait a minute you might want you might want to go to um Evanston but no I mean so the way I guess I mean, it's always such an interesting decision to figure out, well, shit. And it's one of the reasons that there's so much excuses about not doing reparations. Like, how are you going, how are you going to, going to do that? And the problem and what makes this such a difficult con concept for people is, say, if you take your taxes and you're gonna build a community a community center then okay well everybody can that's a beneficial social program and everybody can use the community center but if you start talking about benefiting anybody in particular that's when everybody else is gonna start saying like throw it will be like throwing a fit and that's the um you know, do you, and we've talked about that with the war on poverty and the, all these, so, I mean, conservatives and wealthy people can be complaining about social programs, but they all benefited to it. Okay, you know, you build parks and schools and all this stuff and improve all this stuff and it is supposed to improve things for everybody, but you get back to that question of equality and, and equity. Like, say you improve the schools and you can say, like, well, everything everything's equal because we have great schools, but it's not, but it's not, it's not equal. If people, there's people that are coming from inherited, inherited wealth, inher inherited privilege, inherent, inherited connections. So say if there's, you can be improving the schools in your city, but if there's people from their, from the city who've been priced out, say they've been like priced out of a night and of where they're, of where they're living. And so they have like a rotten, you know, they're living someplace shitty. So they're, so their kids are going to the school, but they have that, that problem. And you still have iniquity, the iniquities of people not having 
access to nutritious food and some people having the money to get their kids lots of beneficial things so the kids get even more out of their schools. So, no, I mean, that is, that is the problem with, you know, the difference between, or can you give the, you know, that's why, you know, the law of, um, you know, again, some other idiot, like people talk about like, okay, let's give every, let's give everybody in, everybody in the country a thousand dollars. No, don't. You know, don't give rich people anything and give people 10000 or, you know. I think that if you're, I mean, I would give anybody, you know, again, this, I, you know, get somebody and, you know, get somebody into a new house, help somebody get a car or whatever. I don't think any, I don't think you should just hand, it, hand anybody cash, <laughs> you know. Not if, if you're in a position to have social, con you know, because you know what, if I'm in a position to um, have some, you know, whatever, are you going to, like, pay for your kid? Are you, are you going to, like, okay, if I'm, you know, what are you going to, if if I'm going to, like, I used to pay for, like, swim lessons and extra and extracurriculars and stuff for kids in my, kids and kids in my neighborhood, and I have more money, so I would, like, you know, I just call and pay for it, pay for it over the phone, over the phone. My, myself, I'm not gonna like give somebody's parents a hundred dollars for swimming lessons and put that strain on them not to go spend it on go spend it on something else. I wouldn't put people in that position, and it's a, it's a weird thing, you know. Like even like um, Lorena, one of the kids I spent a lot of time with, you know, she was I. Um, had I had her in gym, gymnastics for a couple years, and so you know she'd be she's like a materialistic little kid. And she'd be saying like, "Well, can you, well can you just give me a hundred dollars instead of paying for my gymnastics lessons?" I'm like, "Well, no, no, I could, you know, like, no, I could, but I'm not gonna because I don't wanna. I want you, I want you, I and I want you to have gymnastics lessons. I don't want you to have a hundred dollars." Um, so I will be eagerly following what is going on in Evanston and how you, okay, um, wow. Okay, so there's one child, <laughs> okay, congratulations to the bulldog. My family had a bulldog named Kaiser Sose, who I loved a lot. And we would always talk about whether um, we kind of followed dog shows and bulldogs never get chosen as winners of dog shows. But one did. A bulldog just won the national um, the national dog dog award. <laughs> okay, this is what, what my relationship with my dad is like. We were talking about, we both watched The Crown and we, we were talking about the British royal family and, you know, just stuff and... We have this thing a lot where, um, you know, it drives me crazy. Maybe it's, I think it's especially like an iPhone, an iPhone, thing, an iPhone thing. You know, probably they re, they constantly like redial. So a lot of the time I'll just be getting off the phone with my dad, and he'll I'll see he calls or the same thing happens. And it's usually the phone redialing. Um, so a lot of time we don't even pick up. But I got off the phone with my dad, and I saw that a bulldog had won the national competition and I was so excited I called his mom I was like dad I just called to, called to tell you this um okay yeah we were talking and I'm actually following okay here's more um okay Jeff we've talked about Jeffrey Jeffrey Epstein Vernon Hell child molester um the rich um pedophile who supposedly committed suicide in his cell which you don't think he you don't think he committed suicide, do you? No, I don't think he did. No, I don't think so either. No. Um, but so Prince Andrew of England has been was accused of you know it's always been a scandal or been talked about that he was hung out with 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 Jeffrey Epstein for years, 
and it's been talked about and talked about and talked about. So this guy, so he did something really dumb because basically, you know, I mean, people can talk about you, but when you're like him, when you have so much power and money, it would be really hard. People are like, oh my God, nobody's going to like sue Prince Andrew or whatever. So he did an interview on the BBC supposedly to set the record straight. And I watched it just to, I, just to see, just to learn from stuff like that. Like, okay, what are the ways to tell that somebody is lying? Even though you know he's lying. Like, um, okay, why do you, why are you hanging out with somebody that's, it's like, okay, if you're spending all this time with somebody at places where there's, lots of teenage girls around and everybody like why would you not be doing it so he answered their question it was just awful like you know they asked him they said that like everybody um says that there was like scantily clad teenage girls wandering all all over the place there they said like well how did you not know what was going on and he said that since he lives in a palace he's used to lots of staff being around like, oh yeah, you don't, all these people wandering around just must, all these girls and like, well, yes, they must all be servants. <laughs> it, it was just really fucked up. They asked him, and the, and the interviewer was, did really well keeping her cool until almost the end. She asked him if he had any, any regrets and Prince Andrew said, well, I regret that Epstein behaved in an ungentlemanly manner. And the interviewer said, ungentlemanly? He was a pedophile. <laughs> she could tell, like, some, her emotion, like, she, she betrayed a little bit of emotion there. So, yeah, he didn't even, because, I mean, it's, he was giving, he was saying, well, I couldn't have been at that club on this day because I was here. But to me, I mean, when you talk about something, something like that, if you make, if somebody asked me if I hurt a kid, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be saying, I wouldn't need to say like, oh, it was, oh, I couldn't have done that because I was doing my radio show that night. I'm like, no, I, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fucking do it. I wouldn't fucking do it. So that is, I don't have to answer I don't need to make excuses. I don't need to say I was somewhere else because that's something I would never do. I mean, you know. So, you know, some, like, no, I was somewhere. You know, so my discuss would be like, no, I would never do something like that. Why the fuck are you even asking? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so it was pretty, you know, so we'll see if anything happens. But so anyway, he was he was basically, like, fired from being a prince. As much as, but because because he did the interview, not because of everything being said. He, like, you know, they do, he was told to, like, step down from all royal duties. You know, like, parades and stuff. So. <laughs> I don't know. So. Epso, Epstein's dead. You know, they're saying like, um, you know, we'll see if anybody goes after Bill Clinton. But I don't know. Epstein is supposed to have a, um, a, not Epstein, um, Weinstein. <laughs> I don't know. I read, I read Weinstein. Um, Okay, so I think that's where we're at. Okay, so a film I'm interested in seeing is called Bombshell. What's Bombshell is that? It's about Fox News. It's about the women, the first women that started accusing the the guy that ran Fox News of sexual harassment. So it's an actual movie movie or just yeah. more like a docudrama? Yeah. drama thing? Oh no, because there's there's docu no, it's a movie movie. Um Charlize Theron plays Megan Kelly, and I've seen I I really Charlize a really good Charlize I really like her she's really good, she's a really good actor and oh who else Kate McKinnon is in it and um somebody oh there's oh I think oh Laura Dern so yeah there's some interesting interesting cast members so I want to see that. 
Yes, I definitely got to check it out too. And it's going to be at the movies, right? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I missed Once Upon a Time. Okay, they should really. There should not be so many once. I get the Once Upon a Time movies mixed up. There's Once Upon a Time in the West. There's Once Upon a Time in America, and there's Once Upon a Time in L.A. How do you keep them all apart? Like, uh, I never actually seen Once Upon a Time. Okay, because but like, what do you mean by keep them apart? Like, I get them mixed up. I kept saying, well, see, it's easy. To, Once Upon a Time in the West is the one with um, Robert De, Robert De Niro and um, Elizabeth McGovern and no, it's. Yeah, it's, it's where the guy goes to ho the guy goes to Holly to Hollywood. He's like a Lower East Side guy, and he goes to ho and he goes to Hollywood. That's um, Once Upon a Time in the West, and Once Upon a Time. Oh, or else that's a major like cowboy sort of movie. I'm not that into cowboy movies, but this was sort of art artistic. But yeah, are you are you looking it up? I can. What What do you want to know? Who's in Once Upon a Time in the West? Okay, well, and the director is Sergio, is Sergio Leone. Once Upon a Time in the E. <laughs> now I'm like, I'm like, whoa, is it like the... There's, there's a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Okay, which one is that? Is that the Quentin Tarantino? Oh, I don't know, let's see. It looks like a comedy. Oh, no. With Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, yeah, that, okay. That's Quentin Tarantino. Uh, look up Sergi. Look up Once Upon a Time in the. Look up Once Upon a Time in America. The one that was in 1984. Yes. Yeah, that's Sergio Leone, right? Yeah, that's the one with. Uh, Who's in it? Robert De Niro. Yeah, with Robert De Niro. Okay. Who else is in it? James Woods. Okay. Um, yeah, it's really... Director is Sergio Leone. Yeah, yeah, it, and, he, okay, so that there's Once Upon a Time in America, Sergio Leone, then he has another, what's his other really major, major film? He has a bunch of, looks like he's a few. The really famous ones, come on. The Good and Bad, I don't, I don't know, I've never heard of him, but I know <laughs> some of his movies, well, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, because some of them, he has some, he has his gangster, his gangster films. That's kind of, um, and I think. But I've never seen this. Some of these movies I've never seen. The only one I've seen that he's made is The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay, yeah, the good, okay, the good, Once Upon a, okay, Once Upon a Time in the, in the West is um oh okay and this is dri this is drive this is driving me crazy okay yeah this is kind of the um god man this is amazing I don't, i'm just, this is such a god a total guy movie okay so he did the um western he's kind of um yeah, okay, Sergio, okay, Sergio Leone. Okay, um, so, oh, wow, there's a um, Martin Scorsese film on Netflix. He did a, next, a Netflix gang, gangster, gangster movie. Oh, I gotta see that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. I'm trying to think, like, oh, okay, Once Upon a Time in American... America, noodle. Yeah, it's really there's a yeah noodles. Yeah, it's pretty. There's a rape scene which is really upsetting, and I just that's something that I very I will very that, that is just something I just cannot go to go to with films pretty pretty much for the most part. So yeah, this was. Um, there's very, very few films are good enough for me to watch films with rape scenes. I just can't do it. Um, I started to watch a film. Oh, the, okay. It's called, um, Deacon, wait, Deacon's, 
Deacons for Justice. It was based on um, a group of deacons that armed themselves to um, deacon, deacons for defense. It was a group of deacons that armed themselves in 1964 during the Civil Rights Movement to defend the civil rights workers. And some of the civil rights workers, it was an issue because the, some of the civil rights workers were nonviolent but the deacons were armed. I can see this. So there's, a, you know, I'm like, yeah, man. Th these are like a bunch of like church, I don't know, man. I think those, those like church guys are going to be, they're going to want to pick up a gun. Mm -hmm. So, but there, you'd probably like it. You might, there's a film called Defense for Defense um, with Forrest Whitaker. Um, yeah, I start, and you know, well, okay. well, for me, it's the same re thing as, like, why I like Django Unchained and couldn't watch and wasn't, wasn't going to watch 12 Years a Slave. And I started to watch... Have you seen the original Django? No. That's kind of funny that no one has seen the original Django well, with me. Have, but yeah, I have, It's a rarity. I know, huh? Do you I know, do you know who it. the original is? Yeah. Who? I don't remember the name, but I know about the film, Roselle. Don't start, right. don't start quizzing me, man. I, I know about make the sure film. You know this. Of course I know it, man. Shit. All right. But that's a classic. Come, I, I've got that area of culture, of culture, of culture down. I know it of every every culture, but yeah, I have that. I have that one too far. Pretty. Um, yeah. So I started to watch. I mean, the thing is, as I was. Yeah, Ossie Davis, Forrest, Whit Forrest Whitaker. I started to watch, I mean, but, you know, the thing is, I read a lot about the, about the civil rights movement. I read a lot about history, and so, um, yeah, I'm reading a biography of Shirley Graham, Du Bois. So, I mean, I read about, I read about that stuff. I know about that stuff. That I'm going to watch... Um, a watch a documentary to educate myself, but I'm not. I don't like to watch depictions of really horrible stuff for the most part, unless it's unless it's Quentin Quentin Tarantino mm -hmm. or The Handmaid's Tale. Okay, another show that's on that I'm enjoying is The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which is like so fluffy, fun. Sort of, it's about. A Upper West Side Jewish woman that, and you know it. It's one of those things where the parents are this couple that they're my parents' generation, and they are not like my parents. The family is not like my family, but it's kind of fun to see stuff like that. You can relate to you can relate to some, but. May, it has amazing costumes. Oh my god, the clothes are dope. <laughs> and it's funny. Like, it's kind of, it's about this like, 50s housewife that be, becomes a stand-up comic. They, they kind of, the, the real life, it's, it's like, I think it's like a film within a film because it's done in a style that is like a 50s movie. Oh, see, like, oh, see, I, the whole, like, Doris, you know, do you know what I mean when I'm talking about, like, a Doris Day film? Yeah. Yeah? Do you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, see, I just, see, I trust you. I believe you. You always, <laughs> like, if I don't know what, um, kind of screwball, sweet, um, oh, God, who was, who was the other one that was kind of, you know, the, the whole way there's a lot of like family argu arguments and it's it's very old school kind of because it's done so much of it will, will will take place with people in a room conversations with people in a room these long drawn out conversations and that doesn't happen so much in films anymore I mean Quentin Tarantino does it which is one of the reasons I like his films so much yeah. but that doesn't happen. So, yeah, so some of it is really pretty fucking funny. So, I want to send my huge thank yous to Tamala and to Juan for visiting and hanging with me tonight. And to... Ooh.
Mm. Ascari, either of you, you want to like um, Global History Night is twice a month. It's usually the first and third. Um, and I will be back next on the 18th for the next show. And so we are about to be wrapping everything up. Yes. And so, yeah, so you guys keep in touch with me. You can come by and say hi. And thank you so much. Right on. Good night. Thanks, everybody.